All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, October 25th, 2021, and I am your host, Kim Matina. And today I'm so excited. I am so happy to have on my show today, Neff Dukes from Screencastify. Welcome to the show, Neff. I'm so happy to have you on. I'm so excited to be on. Thank you for having me. It's we were just chatting a little bit, and um, you know, it's so nice to actually see you. Even though we're, you know, behind our screens, it's actually a nice way to connect with you. I'm always emailing you or messaging you on Twitter. So I really appreciate you being on and letting me see your face. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see your face, too. Um, It's always cool to connect virtually in person and uh, always excited to talk about ideas. So I'm really excited for the show. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you work at Screencastify. I know you're, you know, a true Screencastify diehard. Um, So why don't you tell us a little bit about um, what you do there? Yeah, absolutely. So I am on the professional development team at Screencastify. So if you're watching this, you might have gotten an email from me about a certification course or a webinar or some other free resource that we've made available to our community of educators. So before I joined Screencastify, I did exactly what you're doing, Kim. I was a teacher, not a computer science teacher, but I taught civics, I taught high school English, and did that for a number of years before joining the Screencastify team. And I think that now I just get an opportunity to work with educators to talk a little bit about how video can be implemented in the classroom. So I like to think of myself not necessarily as a Screencastify diehard, although I do absolutely love the product, (laughs) um, but more so as a video diehard and am really, really committed to talking about the ways that video can can transform classrooms. Oh, totally. I agree. I mean, Screencastify is my main tool I use all the time. And without it, I think I would be lost. Video does transform the classroom um, in a whole different direction. And it's not even just for the classroom. I just find that for professional development, for teachers, um, it's such a powerful tool to have in your tool belt. And Screencastify is such a great platform because it this interface is very simple and it's not overwhelming. And I think that's so powerful and important. You don't intimidate people, especially the beginners, you know? So thank you for that. (laughs) I'll have to pass that on to the product team. I don't do any of the coding or any of that, but I will say that that has been a focus at Screencastify since I've joined to make sure that we are able to create a video creation tool that can be used by every teacher. And when we say every, we think about the teacher that is strapped for time and doesn't have the opportunity to learn a new tool. We think about the teacher who maybe isn't as comfortable using technology and needs something that is incredibly straightforward. And of course, that also includes teachers like you, Kim, who are absolutely uh, really adept at using technology. And the question is, how do we create something that is going to fit all three of those teachers that I just named and every other teacher that exists within uh, the world, quite frankly. So it means a lot to hear that Screencastify is easy to use because that's basically what we were going for. Yeah, well, you hit that right on the target. So (laughs) (laughs) honestly and truly. So I know like, um, you know, we were just chatting a little bit before we went live. You know, you went um, for back to school uh, there's so many new features that are out that that were available. And I just would really like to see or hear from you what these um, features are, because I looked at them and they're amazing. And I'm just glad that at least um, the you know, a lot of them are incorporated to give teachers feedback on analytics and viewer information. And I think it's important. So Instead of me blabbling on, why don't you go ahead and uh, share some of those uh, updates updates that came out for back to school? 
Yeah, absolutely. Let me talk about it first. And then I'd love to share a little bit about what it looks like in the product. So for folks who are not familiar with Screencastify, for years, what we have offered is a really, really easy way for teachers to create videos. And those videos could include a webcam recording, they could include images and things that are on screen in a screen recording, or something that really was in between that was a screen recording and a webcam. And prior to back to school season of 2021, you know, Kim, that folks would create videos with Screencastify. They would share them with Google Drive, but there was this big gap teachers would say, I don't know if my students are actually watching the videos. And beyond that, there was a question about whether or not students actually understood the content that was being talked about in the videos. So we heard this feedback over and over and over again. And our developers and product team really looked for a way to be able to address those concerns from educators. So what came out of that are two really big features that I'm really excited to show you in just one second. The first being viewer analytics, which is basically what it sounds like. It is an opportunity to see who has watched your videos, to see when they've watched those videos, and to see how many times they've watched those videos. And since we launched that about a month ago, teachers have gotten some really, really cool insights. For example, you might realize that one of your students watched a video 20 times. And you don't necessarily know why they watch that video 20 times, but it could be because they're really confused. It could be because they are really interested in the topic and it provides a data point for educators to use to be able to check in with that particular student. And then similarly, we've launched interactive questions where teachers can add questions to specific timestamps within videos so that students are prompted to pause, answer a question, and really assess their own understanding of the material. And the cool part about that is that teachers actually get that information back in real time. So the minute a student answers a question, we have that back in a dashboard so that you can see, okay, my students are doing really, really well on the aggregate. They're all getting question one correct. Or maybe you want to drill down on a specific student to understand how they progress through the video. Or maybe you want to look at a particular question to see how your students perform there. Did they fall for the distractor or did they get the right question or the right answer rather? So that's kind of where we landed in terms of how these features went from simply ideas to something that is available right now in Screencastify. And I also would be remiss if I didn't point out that they are available in the free version of Screencastify. Uh, so if you're listening to this or watching this and you're like, that sounds dope, Neff, but but I'm a teacher and I don't have very much disposable income. We get it. That is available free um, and something that we're really, really proud to put out again for every teacher. So Yeah, that's awesome. I'm, I'm so glad that you did that. Now, let me ask you this before you go on. Okay. Do, do the students have to sign in? Like, how does it get the timestamp of the student watching the video? Ah, uh, that's such a good question. I'm really excited that you asked that. So what we have decided is to put that in the hands of the educator. So we can collect analytics in three different ways. The first is anonymously, which gives educators the opportunity to tell their students that they can answer whatever they want and it's going to be anonymous um, and gives educators the opportunity to see how many people are engaging without necessarily seeing who those people people are. We've also added a nickname feature where students can go in and type in a nickname, which also has particularly been helpful for educators who might want to share with other groups. For example, maybe you want to send a video over to parents, but you don't want to force them to sign in. Um, and then the third one is exactly what you pointed out, having folks sign in with their accounts, um, collecting their email address and all of that jazz. Uh, so it's up to it's up to teachers. It's up to the and teacher. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. Exactly. That's great. Because, you know, like you said, I like the idea of sharing the video with parents or, you know, even with another group of teachers, you know, and having that um that 
feedback or those, you know, questions, those responses anonymous, like that's nice to be able to have that option. So again, like Screencastify, you, you're, you're hitting it, you're hitting it, you're hitting it. <laughs> so oh. what else? I'm sorry. So I interrupted you. I'm sorry. Um, so what else were you saying about the um, analytics? Yeah, I, to be honest with you, Kim, I don't know, but that's okay. <laughs> how about I show you how some of this works with Screencastify, um, and hopefully some viewers can also get a look at it as well. You know what's nice, though, Neff, is that is that all of these features that you just mentioned, like the add in the questions, get in the analytics, it's all in one platform. Mm -hmm. I don't have mm -hmm. to take the video and put it into another platform to get this information or to do or to add questions into my my custom video. Like I, everything is all in one tool. That's that's what's nice is that I don't have to go into different tools. You know, if it's all in Screencastify, I can get it I can get it done there, share it to my drive and share it with the kids, which makes it easy. I don't have to go and bounce around. So that that's huge for me. Oh, and it's huge for us too. I, I think when we talk about adoption of technology, we have to be realistic about what we are asking our colleagues to do and what we're asking our students to do. I know for me, when I had 45 minute periods, it was unrealistic to ask students to go to five different platforms to complete one task, right? Mm -hmm. That just was never going to happen. So if I'm able to do everything in one place, that becomes so, so important. And if we're talking to a colleague in the teacher's lounge and saying, hey, you ought to use this tool, it's a much harder sell if we're asking that colleague to adopt five different tools for five it's, different use cases. Yeah. Um, so that means a lot to us. Yeah, no, it's, it's important because it just shows the value of the platform, you know, mm -hmm. like, and you end up becoming more... Um, dependent on it because it's got all that built into it already. So sure. let me add your screen to the stream. Okay. I see your screen now. All right. So we are on the brand new video management page. And for those of you who have used Screencastify before, you might recognize this page because it's the one that pops up immediately after you finish a recording. And if you're a new user, the good news is that you don't have to do anything to get here. We're going to automatically shepherd you here once you complete a video. And the reason that we call this the video management page is because it really is the hub of everything that you can do with Screencastify. You might notice that you've got a nifty little button to edit your video, which also, there's a free version of our editor, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> you've got the option to share on all different types of platforms. So we've got integrations with your mail account. You can create a QR code. You can go to Google Classroom. We really, really want you to be able to easily get your video to any place that you need. But what's really new and really cool is these two new buttons, the first being viewers. So being able to see how many people have watched this video. So the video that I'm showing right now doesn't have any viewers. So if I were an educator and I knew that I shared this with students a couple of hours ago and this viewer account was still at zero, then I know, hey, something has gone wrong here. Let me check in with that period. Let me figure out what's happening. But what you'll notice is that once that starts to populate, you'll get that information in terms of the viewer's name, their email address, if you've elected to share that, their most recent view, and their number of views. And you always can update the share settings by going up below the copy share link and editing that. And that's where it comes in with what you and I were talking about a little bit, Kim, in terms of determining who can access the video um, and then how you want to track those analytics. So anonymously, by email address, by nickname, all of that jazz. And I also want to point out some of what you can do in terms of interactive questions because they are so, so cool. So that little pencil icon is going to get you over to interactive questions. And then what you do from here is you say, okay, at about the five second mark, 
I have introduced this idea of combining like terms. And I want to quickly check in with my students to make sure that they understand that concept. So you can say right there at six seconds is when I want to add a question by clicking that blue button, type in whatever the question is going to be. You can add some answer choices here and then save it. And then what you'll notice is once those video responses start to pull in, you'll be able to go over to this responses tab here where you'll be able to see the total number of responses, the average score, the number of questions answered. And then this will start to populate with all of the student data as well so that you can see that student by student by student. So I... I am so excited about this because I think about this from the lens of being an educator and all of this data that you now have at your fingertips. Now, let me ask you this, Neff. Can you export this data to a spreadsheet? Good question, Kim. So right now you cannot. Okay. Uh, however, I want to point out that the way that we came up with interactive questions is based off of user feedback. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to our director of product and I'm going to let him know that the tech lady Kim, <laughs> wants to be able to export that. Um, and if you're listening or watching this and you have thoughts about how Screencastify can improve, then please feel free to add us at Screencastify or get in touch with me personally. My email is neff at screencastify. Kim can attest that that is my real email and I do respond to them. Uh, so She's not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> we for sure want to hear your feedback. This is great. I, like, again, I, I really, I really appreciate that this um, capability is available now in Screencastify. You don't know how many times I wanted this <laughs> in the past and just, it just never I just never, you know, thought about it ever coming up in Screencastify. You know, it was just never my my thing with Screencastify was to create video tutorials, um, share my screen, explain a concept, um, and to bring it to the next level and having um, interactive questions now in videos to me, it's, it's just another, it's just another game changer for the tool. It really is. It's, 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 it's wonderful. I can't wait to actually start using it. For sure. And the other thing that I want to point out is we have so many people who have used Screencastify in the way that you just pointed out, right? They've created video tutorials and sometimes those video tutorials aren't even for students. They might be for colleagues or for adult learners. And what's interesting about this new feature is that it doesn't have to be student facing either. So imagine you want to help a colleague understand a little bit more about how they implement Google Classroom, right? So now you get to see is that colleague actually watching your videos? Like, was that worth your time? And then additionally, you get to kind of put those checks for understanding there for adult learners as well to get an opportunity to see how you push that. So now we get into conversations about how we flip professional development, how we make staff meetings more productive, how we engage in common planning, perhaps if we don't share the same planning period. And all of that to me is really exciting in the way that this opens up communication adult to adult and not just teacher to student. Oh, most definitely. I agree a hundred percent, especially after last year, <laughs> you know, uh, just being all virtual and doing everything through zoom. And that's all I did last year was tech support, um, professional development training. Um, so yeah, definitely. It's, it's not just for t teacher student, it's for adult learners as well, which is great. But again, like I, I really feel like just having the ability of putting the questions in the video is a game changer for me, even for mm -hmm. adult learners. I mean, honestly and truly, I'm not saying that like being sarcastic, but I think it, you know, sometimes people just come up to a roadblock mm -hmm. and they just don't know what to do next. So it's just kind of, you know, helping them cross the bridge or cross the road to the other side to try to get them past the difficulty. And sometimes mm -hmm. they need that. And the questions can be a way to get them through um, 
you know, get them through that. So I, for me, it's a game changer. I, I honestly can't wait. Like my mind is already going like how I'm going <laughs> to use this in the next, in the next unit now, because we started a new unit and I started creating Screencastify tutorials for the kids. But now with the, with the question feature, it just, it's just going to take me to another level. And I can say, to mm -hmm. them, go to sec, go to seconds, go to 20 seconds in the video. <laughs> <laughs> they answered the question. Did you answer that question? Obviously, you didn't. <laughs> so I could tell them to go back to that question and and watch rewatch the video. You know. Now let me ask you this: with the questions, do they can they skip the question, or is it mandatory that they answer the question? Also, amazing question. <laughs> um, great questions about questions, which is a little meta. Um, but, uh, the answer is that no, they cannot skip past that. Oh, that's um, good. so, so it is kind of mandatory completion there, uh, that they answer that question at that specific timestamp before they watch the rest of the video. So that, other... that, that takes care of it then they, they won't exactly. even ask me. <laughs> exactly. And the other cool part about it is based off of where you place the question, that gives a visual cue to the student that the answer is likely in the time before that, right? So if I get to 20 seconds and I got the question incorrect, I know I probably need to go back and rewatch the 20 seconds prior in order to build upon that knowledge. Um, so I also like this as an opportunity to help students understand how they can best help themselves and they can best start to study and guide their own learning, which is really, really cool. Yeah, they have to take ownership sometimes. Mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. yeah I agree I totally agree this is honestly I I just can't believe it you just you just again stepped it up to the next level and I just feel like um I don't I don't know if this is going to come out right but I just feel like now you are able to compete with different platforms that have similar options and, and you're like a competitor now with them in a different level or in a different way. Like now you can't see Screencastify as a tutorial tool. You can see it as an interactive question. Um, you can get analytics on it. It's just a nice overall update. And it just gives the, the tool a whole different level of competition. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, I think we are, we like to think about unlocking use cases here and how we make it easier for educators to do things in their classroom that previously were hard. And if we get to that point where it becomes easier to do something, then we know we've done well. Yeah. The, the other thing that I want to point out is that we are also in this place with this new update where you could theoretically use interactive questions or viewer analytics apart from Screencastify videos. So I mentioned oh, a little really? bit earlier. Exactly. I mentioned a little bit earlier in our time together uh, that Screencastify edit is free. We have a free version of that. And it allows you to import videos from any platform. So imagine that you've created a video on your iPhone on the way to school. And hopefully you won't doing it while you were driving. Um, <laughs> but then you decide that you want to see whether or not your students have viewed that video and you want to add interactive questions. You can add that into our editor make some changes if you want, or just use that as an avenue to import it into Screencastify. And then from there, you can use our questions and our viewer analytics, even again on videos that were not created with Screencastify. Wow, so, I did not know that. Yeah, That's yeah. awesome. Because now you can actually it. have the kids, like just think like, you can have the kids create videos on an iPad upload it into Screencastify and have them add their own questions for like peer review for their, for different groups in their class or, you know, for different students or whatnot, they can do with that, do it themselves. Yeah. I do want to point out that at the time of this recording, interactive questions are not available for students. Uh, okay. So they are only available for teachers in the Screencastify platform. Okay. However, 
as I said to the spreadsheet idea, I will take that back to our product <laughs> team um, and see if there is a hunger for that um, and if that might be something that we could potentially add. I, I like that. I like being able to create a video on my phone, mm-hmm. even with my Chromebook, and then just upload that into the editor and be, and be able to add, you know, and have the same options as if I was creating the video and Screencastify. I love that. That's, that, that's powerful. For sure. For yeah. sure. And I, I tell you the truth. And I, I always forget about the, the editor, like, you know, I always forget. I'm glad that you mentioned it because I think it's key um, because sometimes you need to be able to trim a video mm-hmm. or even blur out certain things on the screen. Um, and it's nice to be able to do that in Screencastify too. Yeah, absolutely. The way that we think about it is making a video more in- engaging and making it effective. So if you create a paper worksheet in your classroom, one of the things that you probably do is to skim through it and make sure that there are no distractions, right? Like you don't want some random image to be on your worksheet that doesn't have anything to do with it. Or if you create anything, you're thinking about how students are going to engage with it and the most effective way that you can present that information. And really that's what editing a video is, right? It's like, let's get rid of that visual noise. Let's point certain things out on screen to make it easier for students to be able to recognize and understand it. So we really think of the editing process as being in many ways crucial to video creation. And it's really, really cool to be able to offer that in a way that is easy for folks to understand and accessible. And it's free. And it's free, right? And it's free. Yeah. That's, that, that's mind blowing. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) And you know, what's nice about it is you don't have to take the videos and upload them to YouTube. You can save them right to drive, change the sharing link right in drive, and then you're done. Like you don't have to worry about another platform and uploading videos to, you know, everything is just right there and contained right within Screencastify as far as changing, sharing it to drive, sharing the, the link and everything. It's, it's just a nice, it's just a nice little package. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I also want to point out that our newest update, we still save all of your videos to Google drive. That is really, really important to us. Um, But what's also cool is we have unlocked a new Screencastify watch page, which creates another way for students to engage and watch videos. And I'll share it with that video that we were just kind of taking a look at on the teacher end so that we get an idea of what that looks like. So This would be the new Screencastify watch page. And what's cool about this is it's this distraction-free interface. You'll notice for people who are watching the video version of this that students see the video, they see the title, and nothing else. So it's really, really important to us to create opportunities for students to be able to zero in on your content. And that's what the Screencastify watch page is. So when students watch videos on this particular page, that prompts viewer analytics to actually be captured, and it also allows them to see whatever questions have been added to the video. So When we go back to the video management page from the teacher perspective, you still can share the link to Google Drive like you always have with Screencastify. The difference is when you share the watch page, students get served that question and you get to see whether or not they've watched the video, which is not true with Google Drive, although videos are still kind of stored there safe and sound. Um, So kind of a in a a distinction with the new update but did want to show the new viewing experience that exists yeah definitely so really quick the watch page is that the link to get that um the copy that link to the watch page was that at the top of that panel that you just closed and that yeah exactly so yeah this blue box that says copy share link is going to copy the link to that watch page over to your clipboard so once you complete a video you can literally click on that blue link and then paste that wherever you would like 
I also want to note that all of these sharing apps that are available down here, so sharing in an email, sharing as a QR code, over to Google Classroom. Kim, I think you're a Wakelet fan, sharing to Wakelet. Definitely. Um, sharing on Remind. All of that will also share the watch page link uh, without you needing to do anything. Oh, so, okay. That's awesome. For sure. For sure. Yeah. That's one less step that I have to do. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the watch link is definitely shared within. Um, so it, it's stored on when it when you display it, it's it's really stored on the Screencastify server. It's not like on YouTube. It's not exactly wide, right. Okay, exactly. So that's why it's a cleaner and right. free distraction free. Exactly. Okay. So it'll be a watch dot Screencastify dot com link. Okay. Um, like Kim said, no ads there. They're not going to be put into some weird playlist where they watch other videos after that maybe have nothing to do with what you've shared. What I do want to point out, though, is that we are we want to provide whatever experience you want for your students. So down here under export video, you'll see that that export to YouTube still exists. So if for some reason you want to export that video over to YouTube, we want to make that process easy for you as well. Um, so really Screencastify is about ease of use and is about flexibility so that whatever is going to be best for your students, you have the opportunity to be able to do. Lots of choices. That's what I love like lots of options <laughs> and just just to note those those sharing uh, methods that you just mentioned toward the bottom um, they were in the previous uh, they were available before this update so really nothing changed there you can still export a video um, as an as a gif you can download it as an mp4 uh, export it to YouTube and or upload it to Edpuzzle. So those didn't change, correct? Nope. So those still exist, still available. Um, the only thing that we have done is to change their location ever so slightly. Um, and the reason that we have done that is just to make it simple for you um, so that we know that everything above this black line for those watching um, is what is going to share the link to the watch page, whereas all of these things below the black line are going to share the original video file. Okay. So. No difference there in what we previously offered. We just want to be exceptionally clear about where you're going to be able to track those analytics and who is going to be able to see those questions. I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, because I think people might look at that and be like, well, where is the option that I used last year or whatnot? So you have to look below or above that black line um, to determine what how you want to share the video. For sure. Yeah. This was great, Neff. Thank you so much. I can't believe all of these new awesome updates uh, in, the, in the tool. I really, like I said to you before, I haven't had a chance to actually dive in. I'm just trying to still swim through the waters here <laughs> and keep my head above water without having a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so I really appreciate you going over all of these new features um, because now my head is spinning on getting getting more um, apt with a lot of these features for um, my next unit in computer science. So I appreciate you going through it all. I, I thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I want to give a quick plug in case anybody is interested in learning a little bit more about Screencastify. Uh, head over to our website. We are just at www.screencastify.com um, and you'll find a huge resource hub there. You'll find Screencastify University where you'll also be able to go through all of these different things. Um, and learn a little bit more about each of our products. Um, and that's also where you can install the extension, get started with the editor, all that jazz, which I wanna point out just one more time is completely free. Um, so thank you so much, Kim, for having me. It has been awesome to talk through some of the newest updates to Screencastify. This was great. Thank you, Neff, I appreciate it. I'm just gonna share my screen really quick and wrap up the show. So hold on. Oops, wait a minute. Wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Okay. So if you'd like to visit my website, you can go to the sweettalk.com. Um, this episode will appear here on the home page. Uh, you can check out the Facebook group um, on Facebook, obviously. Check out my YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, check out my blog. Uh, subscribe to my podcast on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and subscribe to my newsletter. This great episode will be right here on the homepage as well as the podcast. Uh, if you'd like to be a guest on my show, you can fill out my guest inquiry form um, and help me pay it forward. Uh, right now, I'm scheduling guests for January 2022. Um, if you'd like to become a sponsor for my show, you can fill out the sponsor form and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I would like to thank all of my sponsors today, um, Helperbird, AliceKeeler.org, Moats, Greencastify, Text Help, Cami, Slides Mania, StreamYard. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to do this show for as long as I've had and um, pay it forward and helping other educators around the world. So I thank all of you very much from the bottom of my heart. Um, and if you'd like to check out any of the books that I wrote with Alice Keeler, you can go to the books page. Um, Teaching with Google Jamboard is out, as well as stepping up to Google Classroom. And with that being said, I will come back to my friend. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nev, this was great. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you finally face to face, well, screen to screen. But um, <laughs> it, it's been so much fun, and I'm really thankful that you took the time to be on tonight. Thanks again for having me. This has been awesome. Have a great evening. See you later.